city of the Philippines. So, Nina, are, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. What time is it? Um, it's one twenty-one in the morning. Here. Oh, <laughs> and you were last. <laughs> Somebody wasn't looking. <laughs> okay, can you see my shared screens? Okay. Okay, great. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so let me start. Uh, one way to transmit radio waves at great distances is by letting it bounce back and forth through the ionosphere. So in this region, ultraviolet light from the sun collides with atoms, knocking the electrons loose. This then creates um, ions that cause reflection and absorption of visual waves in this layer. So the ionosphere can be treated as a collection of electrons and ions moving in a uniform magnetic field. And this is called the Appleton model, named after the 1947 Nobel Prize for Physics laureate E.B. Appleton. In this model, the dispersion relation or the index of refraction is given by this equation where omega here is the incident wave frequency and omega p and omega c are the frequency parameters related to our ionosphere. So plotting this equation, we see negative refractive index values, which suggests that the medium or the ionosphere is a lossy medium. So from, from the previous work of my advisor and um, his colleagues published in Optics Letters, they have proved that metals, which are a lossy surface, produce beam shifts. Hence, we then ask the following questions. Can we obtain beam shifts due to the ionosphere, and are these shifts measurable? Good evening or um, good day, depending on your time zone. I am Nina Zambale from the Photonics Research Laboratory of the University of the Philippines, and I will be talking about our study entitled Transverse Shifts Experienced by Radio Waves due to ionosphere. So first, it begs the question, what are beam shifts? Essentially, as, our, as early as our high school physics, it was already taught to us that light striking interface can be reflected or refracted. By law of reflection, light bounces back, and by law of refraction, it bends. An underlying assumption of these two laws is that the incident light is a ray, or technically what we know as a plane wave. Generally, all phenomena described as geometrical optics assumes that light is a ray. However, in reality, physical beams are not made of one ray of light, but is composed of multiple rays having a finite width and energy. Due to this, um, real beams experience what we call beam shifts. Um, it happens when instead of light going out from the same point, like your law of reflection, the reflected light becomes displaced or shifted from the expected point of reflection. Beam shifts were proven to rely on the incident light and material interface properties. In this study, we have focused on one type of shift called the transverse or inbred feather of shifts. And we have chosen specifically this kind of shift because its basis states or polarization states coincides with the states um, used in the derivation of the ionosphere index equation. Our goal then is to calculate the ionosphere-induced transverse shifts by following the steps. So first is to treat the ionosphere according to the Appleton model, consider circularly polarized radio waves as incident waves, and finally calculate the corresponding transverse shifts. And here are, are our results from the plots. We observe large transverse shifts when the ionosphere behaves like an epsilon near zero medium. And we have obtained a maximum shift of up to 30 dimensionless units, which corresponds to a physical shift of up to 150 meters. This means that the reflected signals from the ionosphere can experience shift of up to 150 meters. Thus, one outlook of the study is to be able to use the shifts to correct signal transmission of visual waves from the ionosphere. Second is we notice that the shifts are highly sensitive to the incident angle and the frequency ratio. Hence, we can then use the shifts and work backwards to measure the frequency parameters related to the ionosphere properties such as its electron density and the magnetic field. Hence, by measuring the shifts, one can then characterize the ionosphere. 
As a summary, we have presented the transverse shifts due to ionosphere described by the Appleton model. And we determine that these shifts are measurable and can be extended to possible outlooks, such as correcting signal transmission of radio waves and probing the properties of the ionosphere. I thank the ICTP for this opportunity to participate in this school and share our research. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very yes. much, Inya. Very nice. Okay, um, we're open for questions. And Henry's got a question. Yes. Thank you, Henry. Morning. Yeah. Very nice and really didactic presentation. Uh, I am ashamed <laughs> by mine. <laughs> Uh, but uh, let me ask about the the, the shift. Um, uh, how uh, are you measuring it, and if it's possible to measure uh, by different ranges, or is a total an overall shift that you estimate? Okay, so thanks for the question. Actually, what I've presented are just um, the first calculations for our study. We have yet to implement it, but um, to implement it experimentally, we're going to use um, ASIO antennas. And um, I think what you mean is that um, we can use an angular scan mm -hmm. such that we can measure the shifts um, in the ionosphere. Does that answer the question? Okay. Um... Another question? Uh, I think no other question. Okay. All right. Well, thank you again, Nina. Uh, really great. Like your enthusiasm. All right. That that concludes our, our short uh, talks from participants, from you. Um, and, uh, and now I, I'd really like to uh, uh, move on because we need to close. It's getting late. Uh, Nina, it's, uh, it's 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> You're you're really uh, uh, you're really a trooper. I gotta say. Um, 